all about spirals and helixes. We're going to go round and round in curves and have lots of fun doing it. I think we should start with your bubbles, Caroline. How about yeah. that? Oh, that's not bad. That actually works. If I get myself out of the way, can you see all those curved surfaces? Oops. Well, I can see a bubble in there. There's a bubble well, in hard. there. That's great. There is a bubble, but the you can really see um, that's now this is not a spiral. It might look like a spiral staircase. You can imagine that as a spiral staircase going up. And there is actually a bubble going all the way from the bottom there, all the way to the very top. But it's not a spiral. Mm, we're going to find out what it actually is. This is a spiral. It's a kind of a wonky spiral. It's definitely not proper round, but it is a spiral. It's <laughs> and, and it's but it, you should notice it's two dimensional. If you look from the edge on, it's more more or less flat. I am not. <laughs> uh, very, I'm not the expert at these things. And can you see the soap film? Isn't that mm. beautiful? And then so you actually have you've got both the sp metal spiral there. And you have a soap foam spiral. That soap foam is very tenuous. But look at that. Look at those beautiful <laughs> colors. Oh, I do love bubbles. So that I like it. is a spiral. Mm. It's 2D. It's flat. And this is a helix. Oh, oh, look, you can really see it there. That's a good one. That's a good angle. That's beautiful. That is a helix. And again, both the metal frame and the bubble are both forming a helix of different types so that's three-dimensional so there you go that's the bubble fantastic we're going to talk about spirals and helices today and here they are here's a picture of a, a spiral as caroline was showing you it's a flat and two-dimensional so that's actually a picture of rope coils on a deck but you can see the spiral look at the knot in the middle the, and it goes round and round and round and round okay and that's flat you can imagine that is actually 3d rope but it's it's flat if you looked at it from the edge it's flat mm. at the top if you took a if you took a horizontal slice of that a you'd slice have a, yeah a single across, plane mm. a cross section of it right yeah mm-hmm now, on the right, what you have are five different helices. Well, they look pretty similar except for the colour. But as We're you see... what the plural is. It's a helices. Helis one helix, many helices. Right, thank you. Yes. But in everyday language, we call things which are actually helices, we call them spirals. But in mathematics, the spiral is two-dimensional and the helix is three-dimensional and the helix is always a curve on a cylinder you can see that from the picture there as, it's, as it were around what well, imagine a cylinder in the middle as the core around which the curve is winding okay and so these are actually in mathematical terms not spiral staircases rather they are helices and they're brilliant because, you know, imagine getting up to the top of a tall church tower or some tower. They take quite a small space, but you don't have to, you don't have to climb steeply. If it, was, if it was a straight staircase, it would be like a ladder going up the tower. But because it goes round and round and round, you have lots of steps and each one is just a small step as you go up. So you have one... The, the stairwell on the right, the helix st staircase on the right, does that inverting thing. It's, it's hard to tell which way round, whether the stairs start <laughs> facing away from you or, or facing or which, which way you get on the them. And which way you get off the them. bottom, yes, the bottom lot is behind the rail and the top lot is, well, wait a minute. No, that, that's the thing. I don't think they are. I think that that's what I mean. I think the bottom lot is actually in front of the rail because otherwise you're, you're getting on them from the corner of the room, which you can't get to. But it does look as though they're behind, doesn't it? it looks well, as though well, well. I mean, it's what is optical illusions, isn't it? And, and actually, I think the truth of the matter is, Caroline, 
what's there is not actually what you see it's what your brain makes of what you see <laughs> yes indeed definitely um so now this is a, a nice um experiment or little activity that you can do children can do and they see a toilet roll sitting on top of my computer where I took and i've got a i've got one that it. i made quite quite quickly earlier today as well you see how that's that's the size of it <laughs> so what i did here was to go down the glue line the crease with with a pink um color and coloring pen and mark that and i also mark circles on the in blue around the cylinder and i mark straight lines from top to bottom parallel to the axis of the cylinder okay so let's imagine now this is an exercise in in visualization what sort of shape will we get when we undo that toilet roll along the pink line that's what it looked like it was originally a parallelogram not like the um, label of a can of beans this time it was a parallelogram. So this is what it would have looked like had it been like if you cut it straight up like the label of a can of beans. And yes, yeah, and Tony's one is far more interesting. So here what you've got is a toilet roll core flattened out and the pink lines were the lines along which it was originally glued when it served its original purpose. <laughs> and, the, and, and the other lines, instead of being vertical and horizontal, they're now diagonal. Well, what's interesting is that the vertical lines are still parallel. Um, I didn't space them evenly or anything. I just wanted to show that straight lines are preserved. And these are the straight lines <clears throat> are, are parallel to the axis of the uh, cylinder. So that, and that and circles, it, yeah. circles become straight lines. Yeah, so they do. The, they really, they, every, everything's straight. There's no longer a circle. It's all straight. So, and that's that's got a lot to do with the the 3D geometry, doesn't it? It's the mm. um, cylindrical geometry. Yes, and the thing about this is that when we think about curvature, we don't teach about curvature in school, but we know a bit about curvature and how it can be constant as on a sphere. And it can change, as it does say on a rugby ball. Now, a cylinder has zero curvature. A, cil a cylinder is, to all intents and purposes, flat. So surface what, of a geometrically, cylinder. geometrically, the surface of a cylinder can be considered to be fl flat. You can work on it as though it's, you can calculate things as though it were flat. It, yes, it, 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 it doesn't have any curvature. Although it, and, but it, that it, doesn't make any sense to me because it's clearly <laughs> curved. I mean, look, it's curved. What does that mean? Well, I flattened it out, Caroline, just to well, show yeah, but, you. But the point is you can. That The point is that even though it's curved, as long as it's a cylinder, it, you can work out the geometry as though as it, if was it flat. were flat. Yes. Okay. Uh, and, and when we flattened it out, the angles were preserved, notice. The right angles between the blue and the green lines they're still preserved. right angles. Yeah, they're identical. Yeah. So there's a lot. There's a lot of maths in there. We haven't got much maths in the rest of the talk because it's there's so many nice pictures. Now remember what the helix is. It is like this screw thread, and those drill bits that you see there are all designed so that they carve into the wood. And the Archimedean screw I, is something, as the name suggests invented by Archimedes, where mechanically you could lift things with a screw, okay? And you see it in this a man who's opening a bottle there. You see the cork is being lifted out because the device there screws the corkscrew into the, into the cork and then lifts it out. So that's an art, well, that is like an Archimedean it's, screw. Yeah, it's, it's, so, it's slightly different because the Archimedean screw actually turns around and what it does is by turning, it was used originally to, as, a prop, as a solution to irrigation. 
to lifting yes, water up right. to, to solve yes. a, a re very real irrigation problem, which Archimedes solved a lot of problems in his day. He created a lot of inventions. He's an extraordinary man. And, and this Archimedes screw, by turning the screw the correct way around, the water would literally rise up the screw using physics and then plop, come off the top, and lo and behold, they had running water. Brilliant, brilliant, yes. So now here's another couple of um, pictures of helices, the pasta on the left, right? Yeah, never again, that's, that's helix pasta, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is in, for now and forevermore, helix pasta. And of course, the DNA was discovered by scientists so they didn't call it a DNA spiral. They gave it its proper name, a double helix. Yeah, and you, you can that, yeah. Go on, you can, go on. You can see in that blue picture that there are actually two helices there, and um, they're joined by these bars. And that's a, a diagram of um, a little piece of the, the DNA double helix. And it is interesting because we did this the first time we did the global mass lesson, didn't we, Tony? And if you actually, if we create a model of the double helix, it doesn't automatically coil around itself. We had to actually force it. We've made it with balloons the first time around, but um, the you have to actually force that shape to stay in sh has forces that hold it in that shape. If you if you have have a go at creating a double helix, you see how well you can make it stay in that shape <laughs> well um in case you're feeling hungry um or to make you feel hungry rather here are some cinnamon buns don't they look delicious um, now is that a spiral or a helix well i think you could imagine them flat like the like the rope couldn't you really i don't yeah. know you i mean i don't think a section of it and, and have i the, don't yeah. i don't think we need to be too technical here but anyway there's another example for you and and the yo-yo nice orange one for you you like orange Thank don't you. you much appreciated <laughs> and the yo-yo goes up and down it's a lovely toy and um i think you know, it, it's a, it's a the principle is one of a helix, so I'm not 100% sure about that. On these delightful pictures, there's an antelope there with the most impressive, um, and uh, his, his his horns, what do they call them? Um, antlers. Antlers. Ant antlers, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing <laughs> else at all there. Yes, so, yeah, I mean... They occur these, in nature. Isn't that brilliant? I mean... They seem to have, a, I mean, I particularly like this picture because his his antlers seem to have a, a, um, a helix grooves or markings around them, don't they? The lines going round and round and round them and themselves, those are the brown marks on, on the antlers and, and the antlers themselves are twisted. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's very intriguing. And he's looking at us as if he wonders what what he's looking at. He's quite surprised by whatever he's seeing, I think. Are you looking at my horns? <laughs> <laughs> I love the markings in the ears of these antelopes. Have you ever noticed? No. They've got the most delightful markings inside their ears. <laughs> I can't say. I have, uh, now I'll have to... Have a look then. Now, the, so where where are those antelopes? Where do you encounter them? Is that in Africa? Yes, yes. I'm not quite sure what his name is. I'll have to look him up. I mean, we we do know the names of a lot of antelopes, but Alan and I didn't re immediately recognise that one. So it's certainly not from the southern part of Africa. So I'll have to find out just exactly what sort he is. Now, <clears throat> in the middle at the top with the red background, you've got a, the nautilus cell, which has been um, notice a shell which has been carefully cut in half and you can see the chambers of the cell uh, uh, a shell and as the uh, little creature grows so he builds extra chambers and some there's something about the way in which he swims which is uh, which uses these chambers so that is a nautilus shell 
got some other seashells below. Some of those are also got this sort of helix or spiral form. And then you've got on the right, you've got two terrestrial creatures. Don't you like the jolly little uh, snail up at the top right, Caroline? It's really beautiful. It's fully, <laughs> fully extended. All it, its antennae and its full body extension there. But it's really. got such pretty markings on its shell. It really does. So like the antelope, not only is the shell itself a spiral, or yes, a spiral, if you flattened it, but also it's got the markings on it it's as well, which go markings. round and round. Yes, mm. like the antelope's antlers, yes. So there you have some examples from nature. Now we'll have some more examples from nature. Isn't that lovely? Now you can see, look at the big one, the other ones are a little out of focus. You can see spirals there of the stamens in the middle of the sunflower. And careful counting, I'm told, I've never actually done it myself, I have to, um, I have to yeah, confess. I, I have that, done it. But it's, it is really difficult, and I have to say I don't remember. Um, but it's it is it is it, you go cross-eyed doing you it. Do. Well, you do. Really well, you can see the spirals, but if you count carefully, there's a Fibonacci sequence buried somewhere in there, and the Fibonacci sequence is like this: the first two terms are one, and then one, and then you add those two terms and then you need to get the next term, which is two. And then you add the one and the two to get three. And then you add the two and the three to get the next term, which is five. And you add the three and the five to get the next term, which is eight. And the next term is 13. And the next term is 21. And then 34, and so on. So that's a Fibonacci sequence. And we're going to come back to Fibonacci sequence a bit and later. There's, there's lots of flowers that ha that have the same pattern. Yes. yes. Some flowers the most poss possibly the most dramatic one, but there's lots of flowers that have petals in that pattern and all kinds of things. It is Stamens sometimes and yeah. petals sometimes. What yeah. about these now? Oh well, there you go. I mean, isn't that rose exquisite? Yeah. And you can see it unwrapping or wrapping down to the middle as it were so as the as the petals are arranged they're arranged in a spiral rather beautifully and the one on the extreme right is a is a, is a succulent or cactus like thing but you can see that again is a spiral yeah um the uh, that's a vegetable just beside the rose not quite sure yeah. what is what is the name it's, of it's that a type of broccoli Mm. I don't remember the specific name of it, but it's a type it's of its own thing. special name, I know. Yes, it does. But, yeah. but you can see the get you can again see well, the spirals there. And on the left again. Um so there's if you look, there's many, many flowers and succulents and cacti, and sometimes it's the stamens as with the as with the sunflower, and also the petals, sometimes petals and stamens. Are in this, or in a spiral form, and of it's course, it's, Roma, Tony. It's called Romanesco broccoli. Is it hmm. Romanesco broccoli? And I, I have had it. I just forgotten its name, but it is hmm. very pretty, <laughs> very spectacular. Yes, you'd really yeah. want to cook it, really. You'd want to definitely serve that raw, <laughs> keep its complete beauty in place. And and then, of course, um, in nature, things don't happen as it were, by chance. There are the reasons why the shapes develop and the colors develop as they are, because normally the reasons are to do with the <laughs> with, with advantages for flourishing, really. They're, they're somehow going to attract insects to pollinate them or for some reason. And I don't understand this terribly well, why, and I'd like to understand better why the spiral occurs in, in flowers. 
So if there's any botanists out there who'd like to explain it to us, wouldn't you like to know too, Caroline? I'm not sure that there's a why. I think it's more of a, a fascination that the fact that it, it happens. I'm not sure that I've ever heard an ex a reason for why it happens. Well, um, you see, I haven't either, Caroline, but I believe that nature works like that. Um, well, Darwin's theories were all about evolution, you know, the survival mm. of the fittest and that sort of thing. There is, a village, in, there is a village in Africa that, that has been designed on the same principle of, the, of the, that spiral going out. And that was the idea with that is, is protection is, 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 well, it was expanded that way, like, like the shell of the, of the, of the snail. Mm. And so it expanded mm. as it grew, but that shape, I think, was related to the, the safety and security. But well, I'm we only just, aware of one place in the whole world that uses it. Well, we've just bought my, our, our, fifth, our youngest son for his 50th birthday. We've just bought him a spiral staircase in pieces, would you believe it? And so it's a 3D jigsaw puzzle for him to put this spiral staircase into his house <laughs> and it is absolutely beautiful it's um we talked about freezes a few weeks ago didn't we caroline freeze we patterns we mm. did yeah, and many of the not freezers in case anybody was wondering it's not about the cold things it's freeze patterns which are a nice long sequence pattern repeating patterns there's repeating a lot of patterns. geometry in them and often they're used in ironwork um, for things like railings and uh, spiral staircases. <laughs> okay, so let's go on to the next one. Now, here we have an image of, it is a spiral, it isn't a helix, on a spiral on a sphere. And so imagine this sphere with a north pole at the top and all the swirls going into round and round and round and round into the north pole okay and then trace with your finger or follow one of those yellow curves around and around and around until it finally goes into swirling around into the south pole okay, okay. yeah right. now also they're not awfully bright so some of you might not be able to see but this image has got lines of latitude going circles that go round on it marked on it like the equator but going getting mm -hmm. smaller as the lines of latitude go up towards the north pole or down towards the south pole and it's also got lines of longitude, which are what we call great circles that go through the North and South Pole. Okay, so it's, it, it makes like a square grid pattern on the surface there. Yeah, so but, I, was, I, was, I was working on, on figuring that out earlier. So the, the point P is actually on the surface of the sphere. It's one of those, let's say it could be a cross section of one of the um, lat latitude or longitudes on the surface of the well, sphere. Well, it's some point, all the points, what I, what I was talking about the grid was that on the surface of the sphere, right, hmm. the edges of the grids are partly arcs of circles. Well, they're all arcs of circles actually. <laughs> Um, uh, mm. And they're not exactly square, okay? But when you project, and I'll, as Caroline just said um, about the projection, we'll go over that in a minute. When you project that grid onto the horizontal plane, it becomes a precisely square grid. And that's now, just start from due north, as it were, the top, and then you go make a line from the from the top to a point on the surface of the sphere and then take the straight line that down onto a, a flat piece of paper and you can plot the every point on the surface on a flat piece of paper. Yes, and it's a two-way mapping really because you can map from the flat uh, piece of paper, the flat plane, you can map up onto the surface of the sphere and then P' dash maps to P and right. P and P' dash PN is a straight line, okay? So you can, or you can, put, you can map 
P to P, P on the sphere to P dash on the plane. It's look, it works both ways. So you can find out what a a sphere a shape on a sphere is in a, on a two D plane, and you can do it the other way around. You can draw a shape on a two D plane, and then by using that technique, then place it on the plane, and and it would be cor correct. It would be that is what it would look like if it was on the surface of a sphere. Now, if you drew a spiral, you drew a spiral on the flat plane with um, coloured yellow, but equal with the same width, right? So the the width would be the same throughout on a two so. D yes. on a two D on the on the flat piece of paper. You'd have a spiral that look, that was the same width all the way, and it went out. Um, yes, I think so. I'm not quite sure about the width thing. Maybe I'm saying the wrong thing. And it goes out and out and out because you've got to imagine not just the piece of paper in my little picture there, but a piece of paper that goes out and out and out and out yeah. forever. Yeah. Okay. Because in mathematics, although this is your dream, you can't do it in real life. In mathematics, you can reach infinity. Okay. Now the North Pole is projected to infinity, that and all makes, the other that points. Makes sense because the North Pole, it, it does make sense because the 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 center point is just going straight down. So both of those spirals at the top and bottom of that sphere become one point. The the two centers of the two spirals are one point on the two D plane because they go shoot straight down through each other onto the two, onto the two D plane, and then. But by the time you finished, you, you, your angle would open up until you're actually at a tangent to the the both above, to the top to the north. And of course, that if if you've got a line that's a tangent, it's going to go on forever. It's like a it's a, it's a big parallel to the piece of paper. Well, it's all very um, geometrical, and it's actually Escher. And of course, he was tremendously interested in geometry most of his his designs are, are based on some sort of exploration of um ge geometrical ideas and indeed that's what he was doing here for those of you who are not british you may or may not know that um celtic art now they're the original brits actually and now they occupy wales and scotland um, and Ireland. Um, so the Angles and Saxons beat them and push them out to the fringes. Anyway, the Celtic art features a lot of these sorts of patterns. This this design you see here, I think I love it. If you start in the center of one of these spirals and wind out, you find that you actually go to the next one in a sort of S bend. It, it sort of can you see, Caroline? Isn't it? Isn't it yeah, yeah, intriguing? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. And, and if you look at Celtic how many art, are there, in, are there in all? <laughs> well, you can answer that question later, Caroline. Anyway, yeah. we set it for our we set it for our listeners to uh, to investigate and also to look for more Celtic art as well because it is beautiful. It's very geometric and often but not always involves spirals so there's an example for you and now we have got the fibonacci spiral now we mentioned earlier that the fibonacci sequence starts with one one and then you add the ones to get two and then you add one and two to get three and then you add two and three to get five have you found these numbers on the screen and then you add three and five to get eight and eight and 13 to get 21. And that's as far as this goes. But what we have here is a Fibonacci spiral. Now, I do recommend you draw this for yourself because it is fun. And what you do is you get a piece of paper. And of course, you can make it bigger if you want to. Um, so what my question for you is after 34, what's the Next Fibonacci number. Well, I'm going to leave that for you. <laughs> okay. You see how big of a spiral you can make. Uh, yes, and, I mean and you where, can get. And where do you have to start? That's an interesting. Where do you have to start? On well, it the, on says the paper? on it. 
it's there on the instructions. Yeah, when I give it size paper, Tony. Wherever you're going to end, you start at the bottom left hand corner of your piece of paper, and then you draw a quarter circle as an arc on each of those. You can see how from looking at the diagram, mm -hmm. and then you draw another square two by two, and you draw another quarter circle, and another so, square three so, by three. And, and where does the 34 go? If you went up to 34, Caroline, it would have to be just under bubbly, the corner you use to start would have to be at just under bubbly mass, which each time you have to think about it, and um, put it in the right orientation, and go to the bottom left-hand corner, wherever it is. We can turn this into an elephant. Isn't this beautiful? Um, he he is just what we've drawn, but see it, near the middle at the bottom. That's that's the curve that we've just drawn. Okay, and he has, we've just changed it a little bit. So the the next picture along shows how you take out the first um, three three circles so that you get his trunk stopping um so it's the one one and two circles arcs that are taken out and so the first arc is in the three by three square and you also make his ear so instead of having a quarter circle you actually put a semicircle on to make his ear and then you need a little dot for his eye and there's the elephant and the, we give that the, I didn't give it the name, but somebody gave it the name Elephant Dreaming, which I think is a, a lovely title. And it's, if you notice, there are different, you can use your imagination again to, to do different things. So you've got the elephant in the middle at the bottom, and you could actually make a, a big ear, one that's, that goes all the way down to the bottom of the trunk, because an elephant's ear does go, can go quite low down. And you've got you've got three different designs. You've got the black and white, the white and black, and then you, you can be creative with this. And it's a lovely way for young learners as well to get well, it is a, in shape yes, this, to this, colour this, in. There's there's a school of opinion that you know do your artwork and fancy it up and change the maths, or there's this uh, which of course you are doing here. Because, but you, what you still have is the four quadrants and the semicircle and then the little circle for the eye so you've got you you preserved most of the fibonacci but not all of it and you've got some geometrical shapes there but as caroline says then use your imagination and and go free and and do whatever you fancy with without it. actually changing the proportions i can see a parrot as well we My can remove some of it i can see a parrot so you can use the proportions as they are, but make different animals or different designs. I can see now. This, now this, I can see your parrot. Now, what I want you to imagine now is four lonely bugs. At now, the I know I can see twelve, but I want you to imagine four lonely bugs at the corners of the big square. Right, so there's okay. only four bugs, and there's one on each corner of the big square. The others don't exist. The others not are yet. not no. yet. But in fact, they never exist. This is just a a path. It, it is just a, a way to help you to understand what we're talking about. Okay. Right. Now, we've got four bugs standing at the corners of a square, and at the same moment, they see each of the other bugs, uh, and then they look look to their well they're going to go counterclockwise they look at the next bug along and they think oh i want i want to go say hello to him and they start moving okay they start crawling towards the next bug bug round going anti-clockwise and they all crawl at exactly the same speed and they all keep the bug that they're heading towards in their sights, in a straight line, and they keep looking at the bug and heading for that bug. So by the time 
my bug at the top right, I should have numbered them, number one, has got to the position two. By the time he's gone a little way in, the bug he's watching, can you see he's gone a little way? And in fact, they've all gone a little way in. And so now, can you see the slightly smaller inner square that's tilted? So we've only got three stages of this pathway marked but actually this is a continuous path we've only just sort of taken f three frames as it were and frozen them and put them inside each other so to give you an indication of what's happening so as the bugs crawl towards each other they spiral into the center of the original square until yeah. they collide at the center and they're always at the corners of some square, but the squares that they're actually at the corner of at any instant are getting smaller and smaller as they move inwards towards the center. It's it's fascinating. And it, it's it's it, just just imagining it, I find it's a very um is a worthwhile activity just doing my best to imagine it and i tell you what you know where i said you could draw it you could draw like a you know like you do the line graphs that that make patterns by joining points on edges and that makes it look like a curve um this is hard i have been attempting it to to make a representation of it and it's really hard i haven't worked it out yet well i haven't worked it out either caroline but um i have it <laughs> on good authority no no not good authority because there's lots of rubbish on the web but i did find this on the web oh, okay. and well, um, there, there, is, there is some good you know where to look <laughs> no i found this on the web and the claim was that they're fibonacci spirals so if you i think if you understood it sufficiently well you 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 could draw it um rather like we uh, we drew the um elephant's ear yeah um but i th i think that that it is the elephant's uh, the elephant's ear the elephant's uh, the elephant dreaming picture it's more of a representation using the squares. It's the squares themselves that are a Fibonacci sequence. I think by drawing the arcs, we're not getting the exact spiral. And here we've actually got, sorry if that's disappointing, but um, here we've got, um, so, so I uh, believe we have got a Fibonacci, we have got four Fibonacci spirals. Um, but, and they are so similar. So we've got a sort of fractal here too, Caroline, because you see what we've got is self-similar squares at every every instant of this picture. We've got infinitely many of them inside each other. And it and goes on you, forever because because we can do that with our imagination. Conceptually, in it goes theory, on in theory, if it was just a point, of course, they would go on forever. But because they're big bugs, relatively, yeah, yeah. yet they all bunch up in the middle and then they have to stop. <laughs> yeah, but that's what I call the difference between an engineer and a mathematician. A mathematician could go on forever and an engineer will go, well, that's it. You know, we've reached the middle now, we can stop. Whereas a mathematician can go on forever. Yes. Well, uh, the, the source I got this from, which I should have quoted, of course, um, actually said, you know, um, speculated about what was driving these bugs towards <laughs> each other. <laughs> okay, right. Were they hungry or were they, um, or, or were they lonely? <laughs> well, anyway. you could, maybe they're four moths that are spiraling yeah. into a, a lamp. Apparently, a moth takes they do, a spiral path into a lamp. Apparently, moths take a path which is at a constant angle to the to, uh, if they're spiraling in towards the light and <laughs> there's a theory they believe it's the moon that they're, they, they, they're going for and um, they 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 take a constant angle between the direction that they're going in and and the the light source 
and that, that ends up with them spiraling into the light. Now, what about this? That is incredible. Well, you'll see many, uh, I mean, Not actually like hundreds of them. You'll see hundreds of these in, uh, in the um, dynamical systems pictures, like the Mandelbrot set, but there are many of them. And this one is the simple mapping of the complex variable Z to the complex variable KZ, that's the Mandelbrot set. And this is just one picture from it, uh, one little, um, uh, one little slide as you go on, 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 and on, zooming into one, it. One into moment, it. one moment in time. Indeed, isn't it amazing? Yeah. Uh, and um, so these spirals occur because you've got here both a rotation and a mm. dilation or a shrinking. Yeah. So they, those, they're going in towards a fixed point, which your eye can see down in the center there. Mm. And um, yes, it's, it, it's, it's intriguing and it's beautiful and it's com complicated in, in the design. It's lovely. <laughs> yeah. it's so now, and there we've got the same again. Well, similar, isn't it? Similar, yeah. This is actually yeah. a galaxy. And now there's apparently galaxies are spiral and they move around in in on these tracks and they're more or less um more or less flat which is quite surprising oh I mean, not, really from the not from the absolutely edge. flat but um yes that's right so this this i do vouch for being accurate because this is from so, the hubble side so look, looked out from the edge then more or less but not so we see this well there is some thickness on the edge, some thickness but, but it's like a coiled so rope oh, it's, so it's my, like my my coiled bit of metal yes thickness because there's more thickness than my metal but it's if you looked at it from the edge on you wouldn't see the spiral you'd see more like de, like a vertical galaxy and you wouldn't see the spiral i'm just speculating here i don't know i didn't heard i didn't know that it was only... something like that i'm not yeah. an astronomer but the thing is it's like like your, like your um wire that you made the bubble to show us it's yeah. like the coiled rope of course yeah. and like the cinnamon bun you know uh, yeah <laughs> probably more like the cinnamon bun in that the cinnamon bun has quite a lot of thickness <laughs> Yes, and this one is, and, and if you're at the astronomers out there, I'm sure there are none of them watching Yeah, it. they're probably going, uh, what are you on about? <laughs> yeah. We well, probably would what, say we're talking nonsense. This, if you're watching this and you don't like it, please comment and correct us. We'd much appreciate it. Thank you. So, so this, is, this is named NGC 6946, HST Subaru, apparently. <laughs> There you go. And here, what about this one? We've got a whirlpool. And this is a believe in the sea. But of course, you can make your own whirlpool um, if you watch the water going down a drain out of your bath. It'll go in a swirl, swirling round. Yeah, it will. And it, by that it, as a child. it is said, but it is denied by other people that the water goes round clockwise in the northern hemisphere and anti-clockwise in the southern hemisphere. But I'm, I'm not sure I believe that. I'm assured <laughs> by scientists' friends that it's a fallacy, that it goes the Yes, same. it's an old wives' tale. Yeah. But something I do know to be true is that if you're canoeing along um, the river where there are rapids, in a canoe, okay, and I've done this yeah. with my husband. I'm not likely to ever do it again because I'm too old now. And it's brilliant, but it's not so much fun when you get into a, if you allow your canoe to get into a whirlpool where you whiz round and it's very hard to get out of it. <laughs> so um, the, the skill is to avoid it. You're along the river, but just avoid it. <laughs> Or the current wants to take suck you in thank you so much for joining us goodbye everybody goodbye for greater understanding and enjoyment of mathematics the maths toys youtube channel is brought to you by aimsec and the aiming high website in the description you will find a link to our home learning guide for ages 4 to 18 and 
a teacher resource pack. If you find this video useful, there is a GoFundMe link in the description to donate to and support AIMSEC. The money goes to bursaries for professional development for teachers in disadvantaged communities around the world. Subscribe, comment and ding the notification bell to make sure you don't miss our latest activity.